Hey, good morning, folks. Hope you're having a great day so far. It is Tuesday, November the 16th, and or the 17th, I'm sorry. And uh, been watching the news. There's some interesting things that are going on in the news right now that I think should get our attention. First of all, an MP in Great Britain made the statement yesterday that uh, in light of vaccinations, anyone who wants to go back to work in the future should be required by law to have a vaccination or not be allowed to work. That's, that's, that's a stretch. On top of that, you've also got men like Schwab and uh, Trudeau, the, uh, the leader of Canada, saying, that all of this crazy things happening with the pandemic and COVID and lockdowns has actually been a good opportunity for there to be a reset. And uh, you're hearing that word more and more and more, which makes it even more indicative to me uh, and obvious to me that there's some things been planned with this in nations around the world. And you've got major leaders saying, hey, it's a great time for a reset. Uh, and, and reset in this context is not a good word. Um, so I'm bothered by that very, very extensively. We also see brand new lockdowns going in. Uh, Governor of Michigan is pushing for fines of $1,250 if you don't do it. I also saw where in, uh, in Michigan there are leaders right now calling for her impeachment and I would support that because a lot of our governors have, um, have taken on a whole different mandate uh, based on, this, on the COVID and our, our own governor here in Kentucky continues to say until there is a vaccine, until there's a vaccine once again death rate yeah I, I know we've got a great amount of new patients new people getting it uh, and even though there are reports of less and less testing so if there's less and less testing there's going to be obviously more and more people getting it I do believe it's a real condition it's a real disease and you got to protect people who have uh, um, uh, immune system issues those are a little bit weaker those are a little older but, I know we had a huge increase, but what's the death rate? The death rate for COVID in this country is still a whole lot less than flu. And, and I'll go to bat with those statistics and that information. Uh, you look at the death rates, the things that are happening and going on. There's still a whole lot happening with elections and, and, the, and the process. Many mainstream media are saying that these lawsuits are being kicked out by several states. And then you go look at the states, you realize they have not. Um, so there's a whole lot happening in our world. Uh, also, I think I mentioned yesterday, Norway, Austria uh, joined France. Uh, in some a great huge amount of online censorship to the point that you can be fined and uh, really really fined if you don't remove comments from from your social media pages within seven days and don't just take my word for it look it up it's out there um, there's a whole lot of things that are happening that should get our attention and also should make us very much aware of how much more we need how much more we need the uh, the uh, armor of God so we need to realize that there are things that are being pushed absolutely pushed upon us right now um, I, I don't like the idea of lockdowns uh, I'm an American citizen and wearing an NRA t-shirt today uh, without apology and uh, I don't like my freedoms being taken when I see governors saying you can't go here you can't go there shut down for Thanksgiving shut down for Christmas but we're gonna have celebratory parties in the street 
for someone to vote for the president while everybody else has to wear a mask and, and not have Christmas and Thanksgiving. Those are the things that I just do not like. Um, there's, there's a whole lot of stuff happening, a whole lot of power-hungry people in leadership um, that are out to take our freedoms, and uh, at some point we got to say, I'm not putting up with this. And so I'm saying it already, I'm not putting up with it. I'm spending time with my family on Thanksgiving. Uh, my mom is 89 years old. Yes, I want to take care of her. Yes, I want her to be around as long as possible. But when I see people saying, you can't spend time with your loved ones, you can't spend time with them, while they're dying in a hospital, um, when, when, when the laws become, uh, when the laws become an issue of taking away humanity and compassion and concern, I've got questions about the leadership and what's going on there. So that's my take, and uh, it's kind of my format. I can say that, and I'm not going to change that. I try to watch the news and see what's going on, look at the things that, that I think are important. And once again, what the guy said in Britain, Great Britain yesterday, that you should not be allowed to go to work unless you had a vaccination, that in principle is tyranny and that in principle is wrong and there should be a thousand people outside that guy's house every day saying who do you think you are because if we're going to start saying well you can't eat you can't do this you can't do that without this vaccination that's the same principle as the mark of the beast in revelation 13 and and i'm not I'm not saying the vaccine is that. Once again, I want to remind you that in Revelation 13, before the mark of the beast is instituted, there is a death and resurrection process that happens within the, the false trinity, the unholy trinity. And uh, just make sure you're keeping your eye on that. Um, it's easy with all the things that are happening in our, in our culture, in our world today, <clears throat> to just run crazy and amok if we're not careful. So make sure that you're thinking through stuff. Um, Paul says in, uh, in Ephesians 6, uh, verse uh, 18, oh, I'm sorry, 17, take the helmet of salvation. Oh, I've got one coming in. Take the helmet of salvation. Some of you don't know this, but there's also, we have cats, and this is this is faith. We had faith, hope, and love. Um, all that's left in this regard <laughs> is faith. But nonetheless, um, I'm at home today. It's a little bit colder outside. I just wanted to stay here and do it. But nonetheless. Okay, he says this. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I want to focus on that word take. Take is in take up. Take and put on the helmet of salvation. Guard yourself. Guard your soul. Make sure you're assessing what you're saying, what you're doing, how you're living, who you're involved with, where you're at, what you're doing, because those things matter. They, they matter incredibly in our lives. Make sure you're wanting to be as close to Jesus as you can. Uh, this dog here, this is Mocha. Moose is right beside me. But Mocha wants to be in your lap, in your face. Uh, when she lays in the bed with us at night, she is right here by my by my neck and my and my head. And uh, just, they're both real loving, very, very sweet dogs. But they want to be right where I'm at. And that should be our heart. That should be the, the love that we have. Lord, we want to be where He is. Doing what He says for us to do. But to take up, take the helmet of salvation. Get your hands on it. You know, Paul said we work, out our, we work our, our salvation with fear and trembling. We work out our salvation with fear and trembling. That means we should regard it as a very, very serious thing. 
And there's a lot of people getting into hyper grace. And why well, said a prayer 30 years ago and I can live how I want? That's not what Paul said. Paul said walk in a manner worthy of the gospel. Walk in a manner worthy of your calling. So this whole thing of if we're going to serve Jesus, he also said deny yourself, take up a cross, and follow me. And I remind you as I say a lot, there's only one thing you do on a cross, and that's die on it. This whole idea that I can say a prayer and live how I want, that's not biblical. That's not Christ likeness, and that's not that's not even good that's not good theology at all. So if that's where you're living, man, wake up. Get away from that stuff and realize that Jesus expects you to live by a standard, and that standard is the word of God. So when you take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, you need to be checking your you need to be checking your things. You need to be checking your life, your heart, your 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 foundation, everything you're involved with, because those things matter. Hyper grace is just the idea that I you know God died for me, He shed His love, and His grace covers all my sins. In the Middle Ages, you could actually go go to the priest and get a paper that would allow you to sin while and then when you got back you were covered because the priest would cover it in his prayers. And and those sort of things are not the, the were called indulgences. Those things are 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 that those ideas that we can live how we want is not biblical. And so we're supposed to live holy and righteous. We're supposed to live by biblical standards and principles and mandates. And if and when we stop doing that, we have, we, have, we have put ourselves in some very dangerous places, folks. So here's the deal. Take up the helmet of salvation. Make sure you are maintaining it. Make sure you are sharpening Make sure you're polishing it. Once again, Paul said, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. We've got to recognize how severe, how serious our salvation is. And at times, how fragile it is. So we need to understand, we, we need to understand these things. We need to understand that, that we can't just live how we want. So the helmet of salvation is, is also an assessment, a daily assessment. Okay, where, where, where did I fail today? Those well, sacrifices that were made in the Old Testament for sins the person did not know they had committed. That says something. Well, it's not necessarily a doctrine that exists. It's a lifestyle that exists that people try to justify that lifestyle with. Uh, speaking of a hyper faith. Um, look, we're supposed to live like Jesus. So... Make sure you're checking your salvation every day. Make sure you, you know, I do believe you can be eternally secure, but you have to walk in a way that is practically secure, biblically secure, in holiness and righteousness. Jesus said, be, or Peter said, be holy, be holy, for I, be, be holy, for he is holy. So, there we are. So it, there we are. So uh, hey, I enjoy reading the comments and seeing people that I went to college with and from all over the place, different countries and nations. It's always great to pray with you every day. And I, I, I think I get as much out of this as maybe some of you do. Um, I, I want to keep people informed of what's going on. I try to share something from the news every Sunday with, with my people just so that they know what's going on because I want them to be aware. And uh, I, I, I understand that some people don't like that. And, and that's all right. But I want to, you know, Jesus said when you see these things, when you see these signs, I see signs in headlines. And so when I see Prime Minister of or, or, uh, 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 Canada saying, hey, we have a chance for a great reset, and I understand there's an Antichrist coming, and I understand what the Antichrist will do. I see it, I say to myself, that is playing right into the Antichrist platform 
and mandate. Or when I see someone saying, you know, you don't get the vaccine, you, you can't, you should not be allowed to go back to work. Well, I see that as an attitude of the Antichrist. So uh, we see things playing out right here, right now. And I believe we're closer to Jesus coming than ever before. So let's pray. Lord, I want to thank you that there's, there's ways for us to see what the signs are. You said when we see these signs to look at for redemption draws in there. Lord, you also said that because of lawlessness, the love of many would grow cold. And we're seeing those things happen in our church world today. We're seeing people who are just living how, however they want to live, with no standards, no righteousness. Lord, there are Christians and believers who have, who have adopted ideas both political and theological and, and social that are not biblical. God, they actually they actually they actually bring more damage and danger to life than than we can imagine. And yet people believe it. Lord, we've seen churches that have accepted all sorts of ideas about what marriage is, about what identity is. And God, we've stopped calling sin sin in so many churches. As the one research that I saw, that 325,000 churches, but yet only 15 to 25,000 churches, actually still believe the Bible is the inspired Word of God and without error. God, i got to be one of the pastors of that church, one of those churches. And i got to be the pastor that's saying this is sin and that's sin. i gotta be, I got to be the one calling people to righteousness and holiness. Well, I don't want to be compromised. I don't want to water down the gospel. So that means I have to take up my helmet of salvation. I have to put it on. I have to inspect it. I have to make sure that during the battles and the wars that I'm in, that I'm still doing okay. And there's no issues. There's no problems. There's no concerns. i got to make sure that my theology and my doctrine remain solid and stable and true to the Word of God. And Father, I'm asking you to give us strength with the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit, to fight, to defend, and to and, and offensively, God, to hold our ground. Lord, your Word says that we've all we can, we've done all we can do just to stand. And that standing is in the context of the armor of God. So Lord, help us to stand firm with that breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the, the shoes that are ready to preach and teach the gospel and share it, and Lord, the, the sword of the Spirit and the helmet of salvation. Help us, God, be willing to, to confess our sins to, to those around us. God, help us to be sensitive to, to all the things we need to be a part of and involved with. And God, help those of us that are seeking your face to be assets in the church. Lord, help us to, to, bring, to encourage others to grow in the grace and knowledge of Christ and to become stronger. But God, teach us to wield the sword because we fight an enemy who seeks to steal, kill, and destroy. That means he's got weapons, uh, he's got weapons of warfare as well. But the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. So Father, give us the wisdom that we need today. Give us the strength we need. Give us the armor that we need, Lord. Help us to inspect our armor on a daily basis to make sure it's still in good, fine working condition. Make sure the sword is sharp from time in it, from making sure we're using it, from the practice that we have with it. And God, more than anything, Help us to put that armor on, to keep it on, and to fight the good fight, Lord. To finish the course. To finish the course, Lord. And having kept our faith and our trust in you. So Jesus, let your will be done in us and through us. Strengthen us and encourage us. And help us to be armored up as we walk out today in the context of the world and the life that we live in the world in which we live. And although we're in the world, we're not of the world, God. Let us stand down and make a difference for somebody's life today. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here's the other cat right there who 
has no understanding of spatial distance. Come on, go, 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 go. It's an animal house sometimes around here, but nonetheless. Hey, thanks again for praying with me. Uh, I am really enjoying it. And I'm, I'm enjoying getting to know people who have, who have texted me or even called and, and, and talked about praying with me in, in the mornings. I see different nations. I see different backgrounds. I see different fellowships. I see different Pentecostal fellowships that are praying with me. And uh, that's just an exciting thing for me. Um, and, and for those that are shut in and, and aren't getting out, uh, my prayers are with you. Um, life is a hard thing sometimes. I'm just thankful that God walks through us with it and in it and, and literally through it. Um, that's where we're at. That's why we're here. And so some of you that see, some of you may see comments about certain things to pray about. Uh, read back to the comments and, and pray for those folks in those situations. And uh, we'll be back tomorrow to uh, look at verse 18. And verse 18 is really one of my favorite, one of my favorite parts of the armor of God. It really is. Because uh, it's about praying in the Spirit. And uh, thanks for all that joined me yesterday in the first inaugural uh, practical prayer in the Spirit. Uh, I've got a lot more questions we'll be answering as we look at Acts chapter 2 next week. And uh, this Thursday at brown noon, I'm going to go ahead and do another a live production, a live stream yard with uh, the coming persecution of the church. And uh, I'll do that once a week, and I will do uh, the Practical Prayer of the Spirit once a week. There will be Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon. That's the plan. So it won't be on Monday again. It'll be Tuesday and Thursday. Tuesday will be the Practical Prayer of the Spirit um, teaching. And then Thursday will be the, um, the uh, Coming Persecution of the Church uh, situation. We're looking forward to being with everybody, and uh, just feel a real urgency, both to pray, to call the church to pray, uh, to call the church to pray in the Spirit, to see as many people baptized in the Holy Spirit as possible, and also to talk about the coming persecution of the church, so that we can be everything we need to be. Folks, there are some things coming down the road. We already see them. We already see it. And so when you got people from Great Britain, you know, MPs saying, we think, we think that, uh, that, uh, we, if you want to come back to work, you should have a vaccination. You know, you got Trudeau in Canada saying, I believe that all these things happen with COVID and, 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 uh, the illnesses and the shutdowns, lockdowns are a great opportunity for us to do the Great Reset. You know, you don't use that word or talk like that unless you've had conversations like that for years. Uh, the podcast is both on my web, on my Facebook page, on the Brace Yourself page, and also on the, the YouTube channel. So, uh, try to answer some of the questions as I see. So, hey, thanks again for being with me, folks. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless.